Step six, derivation. Finally, we are at the place where we can start deriving our wave equation in one dimension. So before we do that, let's think what do we expect from the wave equation. So, there are two guiding principles. One is that we need two parameters to, specif to, speci to specify a basic wave traveling at a fixed speed. We need the amplitude and the frequency. This is kind of telling us that uh, we should expect the wave equation to be of second uh, order. So we are looking to derive a second order differential equation. Then uh, the wave is a function of at least two variables. In one dimension, it's a function of exactly two variables. It's a function of a position, which we will denote x, and it's a function of time, which we will denote by t. So we are expecting that the wave equation will contain rates of change with respect to x and with respect to t. In other words, we are expecting to see partial derivatives of psi with respect to x and partial derivatives of psi with respect to t. So let's begin. We know how to describe a traveling wave. We saw that in one of the previous steps. And the wave can be described by some function. That's a, uh, uh, that's a, a function of x prime, where this x prime is a combination of uh, x and t. In, and x prime is equal to x minus or plus vt, where v is the speed of propagation of the wave. It's negative vt when the wave is traveling in the positive direction, and it's plus vt when the wave is traveling in the negative x direction. So let's see how this psi is changing with respect to sp space. We take the first order partial derivative of psi with respect to x, and that's just given by df over dx. But we see here that f is actually a function of x prime. What, is, what that is telling us is that we have to apply the chain rule and rewrite this uh, derivative, this partial derivative with respect to x to be a partial derivative with respect to x prime. We can do that easily just by writing df by dx prime times dx prime by dx. And this is in fact equal to df by dx prime. Why? Because this expression right here, we can see that it's equal to one. If we go back up here, x prime is equal to x minus vt. So if we take the partial derivative with respect to x, this entire term disappears because we are treating time to be constant. So again, d psi by dx is equal to df by dx prime. We will keep this for later because we are going to need it. Now we will look at the partial derivative of psi with respect to time. And again, we have d psi by dt is equal to df by dx prime times dx prime by dt. And that's because uh, f is a, a function of x prime. And then x prime is a function of t. So again, we can see that dx prime by dt is just be given by the following, minus or plus v, depending on whether the wave is traveling in the positive or in the negative x direction. So we substitute that back in and we see that d psi by dt is equal to minus or plus v times the partial derivative of f with respect to x prime. And then we can see that d psi by dx is equal to df by dx prime. This we derived in the previous slide. So we can just substitute for this df by dx prime and we obtain the following relationship between the first order partial derivative. We get that d psi by dt is equal to minus or plus v times d psi by dx. So what we have just derived is a very uh, interesting relationship between how the shape of the wave is changing with respect to time and it's basically the same as the rate of change of psi with respect to x up to this multiplicative factor given by the speed at which the wave is propagating and the direction in which it is propagating. Good, so this is our first uh, uh, step in deriving the um, one-dimensional wave equation. 
Now we need to take partial derivatives of, uh, again in order to get uh, second order partial derivatives. So we can do that. And we say that the second order partial derivative of psi with respect to space is the following. We take our expression for d psi by dx, which we have derived before, and differentiate with respect to x again, treating t as constant. And we get the following expression, d by dx of df by dx prime. So, we, we, here on the left-hand side, I'm just rewriting it as a second-order partial derivative with respect to x, and that is equal to, upon application of chain rule, d by dx prime times dx prime by dx, and then we have our previous expression from here, df by dx prime. So again, we see that we have this expression, dx prime by dx, and we know what that is. That's just equal to 1, so we get the following we get that the second order partial derivative of psi with respect to x is equal to the second order partial derivative of f with respect to the x prime. Now we will do the same thing but respect, with respect to time. So the second order partial derivative of, of the uh, wave function psi with respect to time is equal to the following expression where we again use substitutions from our previous slides and we obtain minus plus v times d by dx prime of df by dt. Now we are differentiating with respect to time. And that is equal to the following expression, where for this df by dt, we substituted one of our previous results, which is d psi by dt. And then, as the final step, we get the following thing. We get that the second order partial derivative of psi with respect to time is equal to v squared because the either the wave was traveling in the positive direction or in the negative direction. If we again multiply by the same sign, the negative cancel. So we get v squared times the second order partial derivative of f with respect to x prime. And that finally leads us to the following form we have just derived the following relationship that the second order partial derivative of psi with respect to x is related to the second order partial derivative of psi with respect to time and it's related to it by this factor which is 1 over v squared and this is the wave equation in one dimension. So this was quite a lot of tedious and uh, not complicated but uh, very long mathematics. Now let's see how it works in practice. We can pick a very simple form for our uh, psi. Let's say that it's a harmonic function given by a simple sine curve. So at time t equals to zero, so initially we've got the following wave. We've got some amplitude a uh, times sine of kx, where this k is, giving, is related to the wavelength of the function, which you can review from our previous module. If we plot it, it's going to look something like this. On the horizontal axis, we've got a, spa a spatial coordinate, while on the vertical axis, we've got the value for psi. And then if we introduce uh, time dependence into our expression, it's going to look something like that. We replace our initial x-coordinate with x minus vt. So if we propagate it through time, we see that the wave is traveling to the right as it should be, because uh, we have a minus vt in here. So I invite you to take this expression, psi of xt, xt is equals a sine kx minus vt, and plug it into the uh, wave equation to see that the both sides, the left-hand side and the right-hand side, are equal. Next, what we're going to look at is how, uh, how does the superposition principle come out of the wave function? So, we saw that the, uh, we said that the wave function in one dimension and in higher dimensions is linear. What that means is that if you give me two waveforms or two wave functions, which are the solutions to the wave equation, in other words, psi1 satisfies the following expression, and so does psi2, we can simply add these two uh, expressions. We add the left-hand side, we add the right-hand side, and what we get is the following. 
which we can then rewrite as a new wave function, but this time uh, the solution of that wave function is psi1 plus psi2. In other words, we can just add the two separate solutions to form a new solution that will satisfy the same wave equation, which is another way of saying that the superposition principle uh, holds. So this was the derivation of uh, the wave function in one dimension. Before we move to the next uh, lesson, we want to spend a little bit of time reviewing a very elegant uh, way of writing down waves using complex notation. So see you in the next step.